Hello, welcome everyone. I'm Amanda Masaccio. I'm the resource sharing specialist here at Rails. And part of what we do is offer um, vendors and group discounts and vendor discounts to bring to you exciting products, hopefully. And if you ever have any suggestions for vendors that you might want um, fellow Rails members to know about, please let us know and we can hopefully work with them to bring you additional exciting products. So today we're going to do a demonstration of Sky River. And uh, for those of you here, uh, know that anything you say must be on a microphone so that those who are streaming and for the recording, they can hear you. Otherwise, nothing will be able to be heard. And so with that, I would like to introduce Dennis Carter and Maria Laudy. They are here from um, Innovative. And we also have our special guests from the Naperville Public Library, Rohini and Shelley. All right. And they will talk to you. Yes, thank you. They will speak with you um, about their experience with Sky River after the presentation. And then we will also have time for questions. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Amanda. Um, I'm Dennis Carter. I'm the account manager for Innovative Interfaces, and I'm responsible for a number of states, including Illinois. Um, I'm based out of Ann Arbor, Michigan, and uh, I've been with Innovative for nearly five years now. And I have the responsibility as also the privilege to share with you, um, those who are here and those who are online, uh, information about our Sky River product. But I'm going to do most of my talking during the Q&A session, and Amanda is going to do the presentation. Amanda. And then what we'd like to do, if you have any burning questions, either online through the chat uh, feature, or if you're here in the room, if you have any questions, feel free to go ahead and ask them as we go <coughs> along. Uh, we have a lot to cover, but we feel that we can get most of it done, even with your questions throughout. And then at the very end of the presentation, and after the folks from Naperville have finished, we'll still have another time for questions and answers. Okay? And with that, I'll, I'll turn it over to Maria. She can introduce herself briefly, and then we'll get started. Thank you, Dennis. Welcome everyone in person and online. I am Maria Laudy. I'm a sales engineer with Innovative Interfaces. Happy to be here with you to talk about Sky River and what it can do for you all. I'm coming out of Tampa, Florida, so it's a little chilly for me, especially yesterday, but today it feels much warmer. But I'm happy to be here with you today. I do have a slide deck to go through. I promise I go through my slides very quickly. And part of my reason for using slides is so that you will have them afterwards if you would like them. I'll talk with Amanda about that afterwards. Um, we have different types of learners and everyone has different ways of, of getting input. So if we can share that with you afterwards, we're happy to do so. Without any further ado, what is Sky River all about? It's about connecting you with what you need. It's about connecting libraries with not only bibliographic data, but also authorities data. And we do that with three numbers that I'm gonna throw at you today. The number 98, the number 72, and the number one. And I promise there won't be a pop quiz later, but it's just a way for us to recognize the significance of what Sky River can do for you. First of all, what is it? I said it was about connecting libraries to data, but it, Sky River is our full service bibliographic utility. We, and you will hear the ladies from Naperville say, we know that it's easy to use and easy to learn. We have testimonials from them. We hope that it will give you efficient workflows to make your life a lot easier. And we can do that through the first number, 98, that clean and robust database. A database that we have found through library feedback gives you 98% hit rates. So we think that's significant and we think that you will too. That second number, 72, our database now is up to 72 million records. When we started, and even just a few years ago, I believe it was back in 2014, we were only at half that amount at 47 million. So you can see how we've grown exponentially over the years and continue to do so. And we do so through the records that we get. The records that we get are fully certified mark. We are one of three feeder institutions to NACO. That means us, even though you should say yourself last, but us, Innovative, OCLC, and the British Library. We're all members of NACO and contributors. And if we look at the data that is contributed to Sky River, as I said, not just from the British Library, but also contributing partners like Cassidy, Multicultural Books and Videos, Play Away, and Five Rainbows, just to name a few. And that third number, the number one. 
What makes it all so easy? The pricing. It's done as one simple um, annual subscription. And Dennis, of course, will be talking about that. But what can we offer you? Well, first, I, I mentioned that number 98, the 98% hit rate. There are a number of places you can get uh, testimonials from, not just your colleagues here. This is a study that was done by Cameron University that compared hit rates with OCLC and Sky River. Just to give you an example, within OCLC, it was a 98.64% hit rate, and within Sky River, it was 98.37. So. I think that's pretty close, good enough for me. Um, but that's an example of what kinds of hit rates they're getting. There was also a presentation done at a recent IUG where they talk about why they went to Sky River. And as I already said, you've got testimonials from your colleagues to rely on. But I always like to look at things online too to see the studies and what they came with the good and the bad. And I know you'll be doing that yourselves in your research. When you subscribe to Sky River, it's not just the cataloging utility, but there are also a couple of services that come with it that should be helpful for you. One of those services, and you'll see this live, I know these are screenshots and that's why I have these for you to look at later, but we'll look at it live too. But one of the services that's available is for you to report the need for a record. Even though the database is up to 72 million records, there will be situations where you're not finding what you need. So if you have that kind of situation, you can submit a need for a record. And through a service that we offer called Sky Search, we will look for a record for you. We have a commitment of a response time of two days. If we don't find a record for you, we'll continue to look, if you so choose, for a period of up to six months. And we call that Sky Search Plus. Now, you'll hear your colleagues talk about that sometimes they just don't want to wait and they'll go ahead and create a record. But that'll be up to you. We can certainly keep looking um, if you like or if you want to create your own record and put it in there. We also offer a SkyWatch service as part of the bibliographic utility. With SkyWatch, you'll be notified if those CIP records are upgraded. So we will notify you with that via email and let you know whether it's a higher encoding level, whether new notes have been added to the records, and you have the ability to customize this. So you can tell us, oh, we're only interested if there are records after a certain date and so forth. You'll get notified via email, and then you can decide that you want to export those records and bring them into your database. So we've got the Sky Search, Sky Search Plus, and then Sky Watch. All of are included within that, uh, the Sky River services. Additionally, we have something called Sky Match. And usually I just brush through this because libraries may or may not be interested in this. This is if you're wanting to get pre-processed shelf-ready materials from your vendors. We can work with you on that. We're currently working with Baker & Taylor, Midwest, Ingram, and YBP. And if you are interested in that, just let us know and we can get you more information. But another service that we offer that's actually not even tied to Sky River as a subscription, if you were interested maybe not in Sky River, but you have a need for e-records, we have a service called eMark Express where we can provide records for you for OverDrive and 3M materials. Now the way this works is you receive a manifest from your vendors and we can take that manifest and work to create records for you. And as I said, this works for all libraries. You don't have to be subscribing to, to Sky River in order to use this service if this is something that you're interested in and priced separately. Finally, the, the other option that's available, you can report if you don't find a record. You can also report if there are duplicate records. We really try to make sure that our database is clean and robust without a lot of duplicates. And you'll hear in the research from other libraries that compared to OCLC, the amount of duplicates is certainly much, much less. But there may be duplicates, and when you find them, there is a way to report that. And it's within the software. There's a file command where you can just file report, a need, uh, report duplicate records. Now, I did say that I would go through these very quickly. These are all screenshots that you'll see in the live demo. They are highlighted with um, pop-out balloons describing what you're seeing. So I will go through these very, very quickly because we're going to see these in just a moment. The search screen is very much Google-like, just one blank box to enter in a search. You can enter in any kind of search here, ISBN, UPC, keyword. 
And when you do a search, if you've only gotten one result, you go right to it. And you see the mark record immediately. It exact match retrieves that record. Excuse me. And then you have toolbar buttons across the top that can be customized, and I'll talk about that. We've got an option here to export out, but there are other toolbar buttons like printing labels or checking headings or checking spelling. And that all can be customized by the individual user. There is an indication whether or not your library actually has that record already. There's a check mark, and it'll indicate the name of your library. So it will tell you that you, as well as telling you how many other libraries have contributed to that. And then within the record itself, things are very clearly marked. You can see the leader, you can see the variable fields, very much like what you might already be accustomed to. I said we wanted to make it easy to learn, easy to use. That's the whole point of it. When you enter in a new search, you can enter in anything you like here. If you get more than one result, now you get something more like an OPEC discovery layer result set. So you've got facets along the left-hand side, then you've got tags along the right-hand side. Personally, I never use the tag clouds, but some libraries really like that. But certainly the facets on the left might be helpful, being able to narrow down by publisher, date, those types of things. And when you're navigating around, it also will indicate to you up in the top left what record number you're on. If you're in a set, in this case we have one of 74, we can navigate forward and backward very easily and quickly. There's also an advanced search. So I, I, when I do software demos, I tend to make it as easy as possible for myself, so I scan uh, ISBNs to get my results. But certainly you all as power users would probably want to take advantage of advanced searching. So you have advanced searching to use Boolean operators, as well as towards the bottom, you'll see options to narrow down by year and publisher and whether or not it's a serial publication. Up at the top of this screen, you see the command line search. I re I'm old enough to remember the days of doing command searching uh, with, um, I, I now I've lost the name of the product, where you had to do TI colon four comma three comma one. Who remembers that? It wasn't OCLC, it was dialogue. dialogue, dialogue. So those of you who do command searching, you certainly can. You see an example of that across the top of the screen, combining um, parentheses with colons and so forth. Now, the other search that you can do, that I talked a little bit about in yesterday's session, is a batch search. And I don't know how popular this will be for you, but for some cases it might be um, examples I've heard people tell me are a large library system or a consortium where the consortium office does the approving of records and maybe the individual libraries submit records that they'd like to add. There are some variations to this story, but basically what happens is you have a batch of numbers and it's a flat text file, maybe a list of ISBNs or UPC codes. You can search all of those in one fell swoop. So the batch search allows you to enter in, in this case, a single entry or grabbing a file of record, file of numbers, and importing those to search. And when you do that, and you'll see this as I do it live, you'll get a result set with an indication of whether there are variations in that, if that ISBN matches on multiple records, as well as seeing whether or not you actually own that already, and the results will show there for you. So there's some variations, and you can certainly give me examples of how that might be applicable for you if you're needing to do batch type searches. Sometimes libraries have also said they get um, files of numbers from their vendors, and they want to be able to search that way. You have access to the full LC Authorities database, which is updated daily. So if you're wanting to search by authorities or even create new authority records, you can do so within Sky River. And when you are typing something, I mentioned this as part of the service that we offer you, when the material you are searching for isn't there, if you do a search and you don't get results, then there is an option to report a need for a record. And that's the submission form is appearing right here on the screen so you can submit that to us. And remember I said we have that Sky Search service where we'll look for two days, can't find it, continue to look, Sky Search Plus for up to six months. 
Within the records itself, you'll see this as I go, but it, as I mentioned earlier, it's designed to be easy to learn, easy to use. So the screen that you see appearing here, you can tab through, arrow through, click through, however you like to be able to go from field to field. The buttons across the top are toolbar buttons, and I, as I already mentioned, they are easily customizable by the individual user. Now the commands are all under an edit pull down menu. And some of these, you'll get to the point where you know them, Control C, Control V, just like in Windows. But you do have the edit pull down menu and then shortcut keys, any of those underlying letters would be shortcut keys to do various functions within the record. Across the top, you'll see in this case, it says a record for a variant addition may be derived. If you're finding a record and it's not quite what you need, you need to make changes to it, you can copy it, also called derive, and then export it out uh, as you see fit. And then I talked about the authority records as well as bibliographic records that you can create from scratch. You have templates available for you here that you can use to create records, including the constant data. There will be colors that indicate to you various um, pieces that might need your attention. Yellow usually means caution. That's the way of the road as well. Uh, but you'll have other indications, green, yellow, red balls that will indicate a tag verifications. And I'll show you what I mean in just a moment. Right here, if I don't happen to remember what needs to go into a 246, I can do a right click and there is a link to go to the LOC website to get whatever information I might need on that mark tag. There is also the ability to add diacritics, and you've got to pop up to be able to select those diacritics right from the screen. Macros are supported as well. You know, many of us get used to doing the same keystrokes over and over again. So you'll have macros that you can use, inserting fields, deleting fields, and so forth. And then you can print labels. And in this screenshot, there is a print labels button right on that toolbar button, but you certainly could go to the file pull down menu and print labels from that also. And that, an example of what the spine label might look like, which you can edit right on the screen. Now, coming back to the colors that I talked about, the green, yellow, and red balls, when you verify headings, there's a one-step verification of all the fields in the record, and you get a wonderful, uh, very easily recognizable, ah, excuse me, easily recognizable feedback as to what's happening. Green means good, green means go, but other, other colors that will appear, red for a match on an X reference, yellow for a partial match, or white for no match whatsoever. And if you click on that dot, it will launch that authority record that you can access. And editing the authority records is just as easy as, enter, as editing the mark records. We do have full support for RDA. And one of the things you'll see, and the group asked about yesterday in our session, was how does it display? How do those tags display within Sky River? It's up to you, and this is done by the user ID. I, when I log in, you'll see all of the tags in my records, but if you don't want to see the RDA views, you can simply have a different user ID, and we have three, a full RDA display, non-RDA display, or an RDA hybrid, if you're interested in that. And uh, the next screen will show you an example of what that might look like. In this case, we see the 245H would be suppressed if we're not wanting to see that. Instead, we'd see the 336 or 33Xs, I should say, as they appear. And as I said, that's a user customizable display on how you would like to work. Non-RDA display or traditional display, as you're seeing the 245H, as well as abbreviated form of the 300 and the 33Xs are in this case suppressed. There is a link to the RDA toolkit. If you need to get to that and brush up on your skills for that, you have access to that and you can plug in the login for that automatically so you don't have to log into the RDA toolkit. Now, I was just talking about all these things that are customizable for you by you individually. One of which is the login. Um, there, this one will take you through all the different settings, but you can set the font, which is certainly important for me, I'm noticing, not just the font that I prefer, but also the font size, as well as the colors that I might like, if, as well as the subfield delimiters. So you've got a choice in your subfield delimiters. 
The colors come in handy. People do say they like, there's certain fields that they're always entering in records, so perhaps you might like to have those be in a different color. But that's all up to you, or you can leave it as the default if you prefer. When you export out, if you are exporting out records, remember Sky River works with any integrated library system. You don't need to be running Polaris or Sierra or Millennium. But if you are exporting out records into your own in integrated library system, you can choose to export those out as Unicode UTF-8 or just export them out to a file. And on that screen also, towards the bottom of the screen, you'll see where it says ignore fields. If you, when you're exporting out, you know you don't want those local fields that you might see in the database, you can choose to ignore those on your export. And then options for when you derive bibliographic records, as well as that link to the RTA, RDA toolkit that I just talked about. Then uh, the one that I like in particular is that toolbar that I keep coming back to for functions that you're doing all the time. It's so nice to have a toolbar button right there instead of having to go to the file pull down menu. So that's available for you to choose yourself which options you want on your personal toolbar. I promised I would go through the slides quickly. And as I said, that's available for you if you'd like to have those later. But let's switch over to a live demo of the software. And while I'm doing that, a quick pause to see if any questions have come through online or anything live. Hearing none. Seeing none, we'll go right into the search. And excuse me, I'll, I prefer to sit down. It makes it a little bit easier to do my work. This is the search screen that I talked about. Very simple, easy. We just need to do our search. And I, I made the mistake yesterday of asking the group how they do their, what their typical day is like. So I'm not going <laughs> to decide. I'm not going to ask you. I'm just going to show you. I am going to start by assuming I've received some materials at the library and I have them in my hand. And what do I have on, in this case, a stack of books? I'll have an ISBN. So uh, if I have an ISBN, I can search by ISBN just scanning that in. Because there is only one match, the ideal scenario, the uh, Sky River will go right to that bibliographic record and does not pass anything in between. So it goes right to the MARC record, and I see it at the top of my screen in the, right, the left-hand corner that there are 48 libraries who also have this record. And I talked about those toolbar buttons across the top, that mine, I, I have things that I like to do, so I customize and put those toolbar buttons there. The leader that you saw in the screenshots is here. If I need to make any changes, I've got pop-up menus and drop-downs where I can choose to do so. Moving around the record, I mentioned that I can tab to go from field to field to subfield to indicator to field, or arrow down, or click with the mouse. Editing is probably the easiest of all, especially for someone like me who doesn't catalog very often. I can just press enter, and when I press enter, it will light up in yellow, and some of you may already be getting nervous and thinking, oh, no, that's not where she needs to put her tag if she's gonna do a 500 tag, but not to worry. Because once I enter my tag and my information, there's an option up at the top to reformat. So it, Sky River will reformat this record and put these tags in the correct order, regardless of what mistakes I might have made. But if I enter in the data, notice I'm not entering a subfield A. I don't need to. Sky River will store that for me. But certainly, I would need to know the rest. And since I don't catalog all the time, I probably would need to go and get Mark help. But I know you wouldn't need to do that. Anything else in here, you've got right-click options, which I just did, to go to that mark help, copy fields, delete fields, and so forth, as well as that edit pull-down menu that you saw in the screenshots. So all of my different options are here under the pull-down menu. Okay. Once, if, let's say I want this record. I have a couple of different options. Um, if I am a Sierra customer, I can just click export, and it goes directly to my Sierra database. If I'm a Cersei Dynex customer, I can click export, and this record will go to a file on my local system or wherever I choose. And then in Cersei Dynex, you'd use your file, your import commands, or it's been a while since I used Cersei Dynex, but um, there should be a utilities or import batch processing for bringing those in. All library systems work basically the same way. But if it happens to be Sierra, it's a direct export with no need to do that. 
But if I don't want this record and I just want to go ahead and do a new search, I can enter my new search right on the screen here, or I can click the Sky River logo over on the top right. It will prompt me because I had added that 500 tag, but in this case, no, I don't want to save the record. I'm going to ignore my changes and it takes me right back to the main screen. Now that was an ideal search, right? We do an ISBM, we got one result. It doesn't always work that way. So how about if we do another type of search and since we've got something coming up right around the corner, Halloween, I'm going to search on October Dreams. And when I do so, this is that other type of result that I showed you in the screenshots. You've got more of an opaque type of display. The facets along the left, I want to be able to narrow it down, or the refine by tag along the right-hand side if I wanted to do that, and then my result set in the center that shows me I've retrieved 1,532 records. You get another visual clue here, and that is that first record has a check mark. So that's an indication that I, my library, has this record already, as well as other libraries, looks like eight in this case. But if I'm now interested in this and I want to maybe make changes to it or what have you, I can select it and get right to it. If I, this is a record, maybe I got another copy of this book. Oh, what just happened? Did we lose? I didn't mean to minimize it, sorry. We were going so smoothly. You did say Halloween. I did. <laughs> I said Halloween and look what happened. October dreams, we'll try it again. That, I've never seen anything like that happen before, but it's that time of the year. I think maybe I've gotten a second copy of this and what I was intending to do was say, well, maybe I need to print another spine label for it. So that printing of the spine labels, it happens to be a toolbar button that I added but I also told you you could go to that edit pull down menu. Everything we might possibly need is either going to be under that or under the file menu. And in this case, it's under file to print labels. But I don't need to know that because I created my own little toolbar button and I can go right to see how that might look. If I need to make any changes to it, I could do so right on the fly, right on the screen. Now, some of the other things that we can do, that's all simple searching, very easy to do. Um, I'm not going to go, in, I'll show you the advanced search. I don't do much of that, but you saw that in the screenshot. And if uh, the ladies from Naperville would like to talk about that when they get to their portion of the time, they can. Um, I'm just gonna go back to a basic search, but that's how you can flip back and forth between the two. One of the things we like to do is if libraries are interested in trying this out on their own, we do have a trial where we can turn on access for you for 30 days and you can try it out on your own. That's why in the demos, you know, I'll go quickly through and show you just a few things here and there to get you going. And, that, and then really your, the idea is for you to explore it on your own and do searches on your own. Um, sometimes in demos, we've had libraries come in with a stack of books and they want to test it and see how it's going to work. So they have a search right here while we're doing the demos. Thank goodness you didn't do that today. But the, you can do them. That way you can try it out on your own and, and see if it's really going to work for you. But this is not a training session, just pointing out things to you if you do try it, things that I think you'll really like. That edit menu will definitely be your friend and as well as the file pull down menu. All of those searches so far have been pretty quick and easy. You know, I did the ISBN, I got one result. I did a keyword search and I got a few results. But then I also mentioned that you might be interested in using the batch search if you have situations for that. I did a batch search yesterday, so I actually have one up here in the display for 20 best Florida beaches in coastal cities. But in the meantime, I've received a f either, someone said yesterday, they have maybe a list of short bibliographic information, an ISBN and maybe a title. Well, if it's saved as a file, a flat file, just the numbers, you can go in and add ISBNs to that batch, either scanning them in right here or using the import to bring in a file of ISBNs from somewhere else, whether it's on your local machine or on a network. So in my Sky River folder, I have some ISBNs and I can bring those in. And so it just displays right here as ISBNs. I can click search and it will search all of those and get me my results. 
This screen was a little bit hard to see on that screenshot that I showed you, but there are a number of columns here, and if you don't like the columns that are displaying, you can choose to pick which ones will actually show um, in the display if you don't like to see all of those that are here. So we can, um, I actually looked at this yesterday and now I've lost it again. There's an option to change the column headings that display on the screen. Um, so if we don't really need to see how many libraries have it, or maybe we don't need to see the encoding level, we can hide that from the display. But otherwise, it does the results for me, and it also shows that I actually have one of them already. And again, I can take all of these and do an export, and that way I don't even have to look at the individual records. I can go right to the export from here without having to bother with that part of the process. So handy. Just a quick check, is anybody in the room think that, you, that it might be something that you would use or no? Am I off base here? None of them are, are nodding, so okay. In future demos, I'll go through it more quickly and not, uh, not talk about it. So back to a search. Uh, one more search I might do. Since I am from Florida, I like to floor, search on Florida's best beaches. And when I search, that result set again, I see here, I'm going to just bring up any record, it doesn't matter which one. And when I displayed on screen, I wanted to get to those toolbar buttons because I said the edit pull down menu is your friend and this is where I can go into the settings and you see all the other features that are here for diacritics, checking the spelling, editing the constant data, but down at the very, very bottom is where those settings are. And that is where I, whenever I start using it for the first time, and I did not do it when we first started, but certainly I think it'll make a big difference now if I bump that font and make that a little bit easier for you all to see in the back of the room or on the online display. So we can go into the settings and go to that editor, change that font size, bring it up, even maybe make it bold, might make it easier to see. And perhaps if I don't like the subfield delimiter, if I'd like to use something else, I could save all of that. And that's tied to the individual user ID. I also mentioned in the screenshots that there is an option to use macros. If you're doing quite a bit of editing and keystroking, you may find it useful to have macros. And the macros are for activities such as inserting fields, deleting fields, copying, uh, find and replace, and so forth. These, I have to say, they're a little tricky. And what I do is I grab one that's already there or look in the documentation of, to know how to do it, especially if you're doing things like a find and replace. So it's, you know, it's a little bit of a coding language, but once you do it and you um, have taken an example of one that's already in here, then you get in, can hopefully easily create a new one. So you can see here, like, what am I doing? I'm inserting a 910, so what do I need? I need a dollar sign and then a brace and then the initials of the cataloger who's doing it. But that, if you need help with any of that type of activity, we can certainly help you with that. Other things that might make it easier for you, you saw in the screenshots was diacritics. So if you're needing to enter in diacritics, you can, and those will display just fine for you on screen. Now, I believe I went through everything in record time. So I'll pause again for a moment to see if any questions came through or any questions in the room while we're here before I turn it over. Okay. Yes. Is there a question? When you are editing the record, are you editing a master record or are you editing and then just loading for your own use? That's a very good question. When I'm editing this record, and you saw how I added like the 500 tag, am I editing the master record or I'm editing it for my own use? That depends. If you're a contributor, then when you're editing the record, it gets, ed it gets edited in the master database. Not every library wants to be a contributor. Some libraries just want to use the database to grab records from. So if all you're doing is grabbing records from, then when you edit, it won't get saved, but it'll, you'll export it out, and it'll get saved as you export it out. But yeah, very good question. I'm going to turn it over to the lovely ladies from Naperville and get them set up. And I think I, I have your PowerPoint, but I suppose we can make some changes. 
they're asking. Right now we use OCLC and all the users feed into one save file. We can put in up to 100 records. Is Sky River similar or can we have each user have their own save file? Yeah, that's one of the the question is the question is about in comparing to OCLC and OCLC there's one share file. I can check into this, but as far as I know, each library has their own file because when you log in, you're logging in with your own user ID and password. Um, but I'll I'll make a note to follow up on that, Dennis. Uh, but I I think the question is, can each individual cataloger have their own file? Is that what the question is, or individual library? It says, right now we use OCLC and all the users feed into one saved file. Can we put in up to 100 records? Um, is, we can put in up to 100 records. Is SkyRiver similar or can each user have their own save file? So there's two parts to that question. Um, there is the part in terms of uh, the number of records that can go in. So there's no limit in terms like a 100 limit. Uh, and then there's the part, well, can each individual user, so you can have multiple files. Um, and if you choose to combine them together, Maria kind of talked about that early on. If you choose to combine them together, you can do so. But if you don't, you can, they can be separate. So the answer to the question is yes, they can have their own individual files. And also there's not a 100 limit. Good afternoon. Can you hear me? Yes, thank you. <clears throat> My name is Rohini Bauka, and I'm the Technical Services Manager at the Naperville Public Library. I've been with the Naperville for almost 18 years, and uh, being in that position, I have seen many changes come through at Naperville. And one of the major changes, which is very successful, is migrating from OCLC to Sky River. I've been in this library field for the last 25 years, and like many of us, it was a challenging uh, issue for us to, for the, to, to deal with this migration. I myself did catalog using OCLC for the last 20 years. So um, I just want to share with you the success stories of uh, Naperville, uh, how we migrated from OCLC to Sky River, and um, it's the best uh, decision we ever made. Just wanted to give you a little background of uh, how we migrated or what prompted. Naperville Public Library was the first library in the state of Illinois to migrate um, and implement Sky River to use their cataloging services instead of OCLC, Volcat, in June 2012. A little background. Um, I've, I attended one of the presentations at um, IUG in 2009. There was a very um, great presentation by Michigan State Public Libraries and even universities on Sky River, which was the first time, very first time, we actually, uh, several librarians from uh, the Illinois area, we were interested to watch, and uh, the presentation was fantastic. When we watched and we talked to the librarians from uh, Michigan State, um, we did uh, they contact them and got some very wonderful feedback. So when we looked at the products and services and their cost structure, which was very impressive for us at that time, then we contacted the customers from Sky River, uh, other customers at Scottsdale, San Diego County, Phoenix Public Library, and San Francisco Public Library. Presented this idea to the executive team because that's the... Um, uh, higher up management who is going to approve. This is a major change and also our major um, decision has to come from the catalogs as well who do cataloging and deal with the issues uh, with mark records, etc. So their input in the decision making process was very, very important for this migration. So what is Sky River? Like Dennis and Maria said, it is a bibliographic utility that provides cataloging services, of course. But it is a subscription database based on an annual fee. With OCLC, 
we used we have to buy x number of licenses or user logins each login has a um, price has a cost involved with sky river it's unlimited user licenses and the, the database access and authority uh, was um, not priced separately with oclc there was a cost with each user login x number of users if you have five users for like for for other databases you do have to pay for each user or login id however you call it at the same time there was also a price difference with the prime time cost as well as after five o'clock when it is uh, a slow period of time or however you call it but there was a price difference um, from morning eight until or morning seven until five but after five o'clock, it was much cheaper. So uh, we had librarian staff, uh, we had catalogers at Naperville who were work working late just to save the cost or the money, and then they only did copy cataloging, et cetera. Sky River also works uh, with third-party vendors, cataloging program like Bacon Taylor, Midwest Tape, Ingram. So we do outsource quite a bit uh, at Naperville Public Library, and uh, the partnership is working great for us. Um, the vendors are great, and also the ILS system, Innovative, uh, uh, works well with them. By the way, we are, with, we are on Sierra, and uh, we are at Advantage. We get our records exported directly into the system, so there's no media, medium uh, uh, second stage or a second stop in between. So exports records directly in Sierra for innovative customers. I'm not sure whether it does for Millennium, but it's for sure it does for Sierra. And the customer support is 24-7. So the major factors of consideration and evaluation, of course, uh, it was operational needs with the uh, budget constraints that most of us we uh, face in this city in this era the cost benefit analysis so uh, every year prior to renewing uh, any databases contracts it's my responsibility to analyze what we are paying why we are paying cost per serve, cost per use um, that kind of analysis i have to provide to the executive team and to the library board to get approval for the next 3 years renewal most of the databases, there's a three to five percent increase when you renew the contracts. So, does that fit in my next year's budget or not? Is uh, it's my responsibility uh, to do that analysis and provide feedback. So, the pricing model when I compared with OCLC versus SkyRiver was way, way, very low, which actually. It was 40%. To be honest, it was a, there was a 40% uh, change in the price from uh, Sky River to OCLC, which prompted us to migrate to Sky River. Of course, I said competing system features that uh, you have uh, watched uh, what Maria has uh, shown us. Ease of use for cataloging, identical toolbar, identical terminology, identical tabs, and fails. So if you're using catalog, if you're cataloger and using OCLC, regardless, no matter how long you've been using, it's very identical, and uh, we did not uh, had any issues or problems. User interface and record layout, very identical. And uh, I cannot say enough about their customer support structure. It was outstanding. That's the exact word I would like to use because anytime we did not go through any trial period or we did not have any prior training. Boom, we just migrated. There was a one week uh, time frame where we used both the systems, but we were comfortable. We just have wanted to plug the, pull the plug off OCLC and get everybody used to um, Sky River. Like I said, there was many, very minimal training. So with this, I'm going to now switch uh, this to our cataloger, Michelle Sandstrom. Uh, she can speak about her cataloging expertise and how she handled the problems with the migration. Can you hear me? OK. Um, a lot of things that uh, I'm going to talk about have already been mentioned either by Maria or by Rohini, so this will be kind of brief. And probably just I'll be more like an answer person later if you have questions about specific cataloging um, practices or things you want to know. Um, the implementation, all the technical 
aspects of it are listed here as far as our IP and the software installation and all that. Um, it all went smoothly. We really didn't have any trouble as far as the technical um, transition from OCLC to Sky River within our system. At the time, we were a Sierra library. We were Millennium before that. And I think we were Sierra right about the same time that we got Sky River, which uh, does provide an advantage in that um, we can export our direct, our directly our records from our ILS, I mean, from Sky River into our ILS. But there's just an, uh, one additional step, I think, if you have a different ILS uh, that Maria was talking about, saving it to a file and then importing it that way. Um, I'd like to talk more about the training. And I think if you go to the next slide, Rohini, there's a little bit more about that. Uh, it was literally one day, so um, it was very user-friendly. We had a staff member from um, Sky River come out and spend time with each of the catalogers and walk us through our workflow and what we did. And we just did hands-on training right there. And it, it did just take one day, truly. Um, and then after that, we had all kinds of customer support where we could certainly question people. There are, uh, there's a listserv that we can consult, just like with OCLC. You can directly uh, contact uh, staff at Sky River and get answers to your questions. But honestly, after that immediate, uh, after the initial technical transition and after the training, um, we didn't really have, truly didn't have a lot of uh, bumps in the road after that. So the cataloging features um, are listed here. I won't go through each of them individually, but uh, a lot of them have been, have been uh, spoke to already. Um, the load profiles, we are, our system admin did. We didn't have any trouble with that. Uh, we use a 907 tag as a match point it's where we put our um, record number in and we can overlay, or you can just uh, you know, pull a record directly in if you're not overlaying a record in your ILS. Um, there's a pretty robust authority file, a very robust authority file, as well as the uh, bibliographic utility for bib records. Um, we have, we're a NACO library, we're a contributor right now, and we were able to do that through Sky River without a problem. Uh, Jody Willemshen walked us through that, um, and it was, uh, we were able to get training from LC, we were able to submit records for review, and now we're able, we're past the training point, and we're able to submit our, our records directly into the national authority files. So it is uh, the same as OCLC in that regard. Um, let's see. So that's the authority records, the creation and deletion. Um, are done, for us, are done automatically. I think it's the same way for all ILSs, but it's a very simple system. It's not something that we have to actually uh, go in and delete our holdings from Sky River. It's done through an algorithm. It's, it's just done automatically for us. Um, yeah, so it's, it's a very easy process. I imagine my input will be more about answering questions that you may have specifically. It's very similar to OCLC, and in a lot of ways for us, it's actually easier. So I will hand it back to Rohini, and if you have questions later, you can ask me. Thanks. So in conclusion, what I would like to add is, uh, why did NPL change to Sky River? So well, like I said, there's a continuous uh, demand to review the products and services every year. And of course, budget constraints and uh, limited resources and uh, patrons and the community still expects the same level of service regardless of the budget cuts or whatever and uh, which we all strive to provide the customers the best service we can. And uh, Sky River offered a competitive platform fee with a very cost effective pricing module like, that I, like I said that suited NPL public library needs. Um, OCLC pricing structure had a huge variance, a huge variance um, compared to Sky River for the services offered. The, the invoice I used to receive from OCLC was like a booklet and uh, there were so many product codes, uh, more than 100 product codes, which I didn't know what I was signing for or what I was paying for. So I did try to reach an OCLC rep for several years not months, several years, and um, I could not get a proper answer, so we did approach, try to approach the, C, the vice president as well, because that's the direction, that's what I was uh, told my director, I was asked, and I did, which I did, and uh, finally, somebody got through us, and then they said, it's a bundle price. Whether you use this products or not, it's a bundle price, take it or leave it. So then we decided, okay, we do not need all these products. I have only, on the whole entire list, I had only four or five 
products that we were using, but we were still charging. So at the time, we have to make a decision, which uh, our director did make it. And within a week, we decided in June of 2012, our director was John Spears. And uh, we talked, and uh, we just pulled the plug out. And uh, to be honest, it was the best decision we made and uh, cost effective and providing the same level of customer service that we're doing right now. And there was no downtime at all during this transition. Thank you. So if there are any questions in the room or online, we'll entertain them for either um, Rohini and Shelly or for Maria, myself. My library, we are a standalone. I'm at Morton Grove Public Library. And in addition to using it for cataloging, we rely heavily on it for our interlibrary loan. And I'm curious if you can speak to that, if it impacted you, or if innovative folks can comment on other libraries. That's the one disadvantage when we signed with Sky River. Uh, but I cannot exactly say after all these year, five years of experience, that we were at disadvantage because several libraries in the Illinois area, we joined us as a mini consortium uh, and we call it Lincoln, L-I-N-K-I and Lincoln. And we do share resources. And uh, there is a link on our website. If patrons can't find, they're searching for a certain title, they cannot find it, they can click in, on that link. It will take them to wherever, who, whichever library has the holdings. They can place a hold directly, and that type, that item or title gets delivered to Naperville Public Library. And uh, so that wasn't an issue. Yes, there was, uh, uh, during transition, there was, uh, uh, we posted our holdings in the past uh, on OCLC, so that was kind of uh, a little bit of uh, uh, problematic uh, during transition, but uh, once we stopped posting it, people directly were able to still access Naperville Public Library holdings. We are also on link data. So if somebody does a Google search, our holdings are, they can find uh, what we own in our collection. So there's three parts to that question. Rohini answered one part, LinkedIn, which utilizes innovative in-reach resource sharing software, supports the ability for libraries that are in a consortium or group to be able to share resources. So you have nine libraries and link? No, I think totally 11. 11 libraries that are part of the LinkedIn network. So they can share information amongst themselves. As a standalone, so that's part one of the answer. As a standalone library, you, you don't have the benefit of that unless you join a consortium. Um, so your ability to address interlibrary loan still relies on the service that's provided through OCLC. What we have found, so that's part two. Part three of the answer is, or is that what we have found, it, it really depends on the relationship that you have with OCLC. There have been times when customers who have come to Sky River and basically discontinued their use of OCLC solution, OCLC said, that's fine, but we're gonna jack up the per record charge for interlibrary loan. It really depends, so if, you don't have a great relationship with them, they may check that cost up and it might make it difficult for you, for a library to justify making the switch. I mean, I'll be very open and honest with you. It may be difficult because if they increase that price so much, then it may not be worth the cost savings that you're gonna experience for the bibliographic service. Part 3B of this answer. What, I, what we have seen from other libraries is that when they've been able to either collectively, like for example, um, several libraries that are part of Rails, basically said to OCLC, well, we don't want you to penalize us for um, making this decision because uh, as it relates to the bibliographic service, uh, sometimes the group can put pressure on OCLC not to do it. It's much more difficult when it's an individual library as opposed to when it's a consortium because if the consortium says or uh, if the consortium says, hey, look, we got 70 libraries or we got 100 libraries and you 
we don't want you doing that, then that's much more meaningful or much more powerful than if it's an individual or two libraries that make the difference. So yes, that is a challenge associated, but it really depends on, I go back to your relationship with OCLC. You're welcome. Just want to add some, Dennis, and we are standalone Naperville Public Library, and uh, I don't think we had any problems or issues. We formed our own mini consortium, and it's helping. And uh, some of the libraries who just mi who also migrated to Sky River, they did a couple of them. They did purchase uh, the ILL module separately from OCLC, mm -hmm. like Jenny said, for a higher price. Is Sky River compatible with Mac? Yes. The, the answer is yes. Do we have a question over here in the room? Yeah, uh, uh, hold on a second. <laughs> People never hand me a microphone because my voice is so loud. It's just like, what? OK. Um, and I, uh, my cataloging knowledge is actually fairly limited, but looking at you know, getting this information into the catalog for our customers. Um, I noticed that something that was on there about eMark Express um, for e-records and OverDrive was mentioned, but I don't know that Access 360 was, although I saw that Baker and Taylor is a group that you work with. I, I'm just curious because I, I wanted to know, we, we have OverDrive, we're looking at Access 360. Uh, I'm just gonna check to make sure, but I'm pretty sure that it is covered, that she'll verify. So, and while she's looking that up, so the eMarket Express is a separate service, and so you don't even, as she did mention, as Maria mentioned, you don't need to have the use of Sky River. Uh, and there's definitely the four that she mentioned, and I, well, so I'm like 99% sure, which she's gonna verify before we leave today, uh, if Access 360 is included as part of the Baker and Taylor. You guys support. are an Access, Naperville is an Access 360. E, yeah, you're e, they, we call it e-read in the, Illinois in the state. So, and they are a member of it. We have Access 360 uh, records that we actually get directly from, um, boy, where do we get them from? It's not through the eMark Express uh, service. Yes. From you guys, from Rails, yeah. So, uh, so no, for Access 360, in our experience, we do not get our records through this service, yeah, through Sky River. But Maria's checking right now, and so we'll get an answer for you shortly. Thank you. Other questions in the room? Any online? So I was going to mention a couple of things very quickly. Um, um, Shelly and Rohini mentioned about training. And we can do train if you were interested in a solution, we can do training two different ways. Uh, we can train individual libraries, or we can actually we can do it three ways. We can provide training uh, to Rails, and then you can get that if, if Rails agrees to that. And then that training can be conducted by Rails. Or we can do something what we refer to as trainer trainer, uh, where a group of libraries can send multiple people to a training session, and then they're responsible for going back to their individual libraries and training their individual catalogers. Do I do remember what um, the folks from Naperville mentioned that the amount of training is is, is very minimum, uh, is very self, is very intuitive. Uh, so the training is not a major commitment, but there's different ways to accomplish the training. I also want to mention something about pricing. Uh, we're working with Rails to cre uh, develop pricing that uh, Rail members receive uh, a discount uh, associated with the service. So we have our subscription prices. If you came directly to me and said, Dennis, we want this service, um, there will be that price that I make available to you. And then, but if you go through Amanda and work with the folks at Rails, uh, they will provide you with pricing, which would be di will be discounted from that list price if you came directly to us. Uh, our pricing is based on um, the size of your co collection. Okay, so the the bigger your I'm, I'm sorry, I said collection circulation. So the higher your circulation, the higher the price. The lower your circulation, the lower the price. Any other questions? Oh, 
How many libraries are currently using Sky River and any consortia? Do you, you know? I don't have that number off the top of my head, but we have those three that Dennis already gave you within the area, Waukegan, Naperville, and Gail Borden. Gail Borden. And then we'll get the, we can get a number. There are large numbers of consortium using them. So yes, yeah. I can get that for you. No, um, this is Veranda from Rails. I just wanted to say, I, of course, don't know how many consortia are using Sky River across the country, but in an effort to, uh, I'm in resource sharing with Amanda, and in an effort to serve members, we have talked with two different consortia in other states about their use of Sky River in a shared catalog and a standalone way. One of those consortia is called Click, and it's based in Colorado. And they have a group called Aspen Cat of shared folks that use it, and some standalones as well. Amanda, was the, the other one was Midwestern, wasn't it? I can't think of the name. I do not think it was my people. I feel like I would remember that. OK, don't say it like the Midwest is generic. But um, <laughs> yeah, it wasn't Michigan, because I'm from Michigan. But um, I thought it was Kansas, but that's because I'm not from there. But we have been trying to do due diligence in terms of how folks are outside of our state are using it, how it works consortially as well, well as standalone, just to get some more information for you. And we've heard great things thus far. Okay. Thanks, Veranda. Other questions? Maria mentioned that if you're interested in a trial, we can easily set that up. Um, typically, what we prefer is to spend about 45 minutes um, giving you an overview before you begin the trial, although a, a lot of what we do during that overview, <laughs> she just showed you. Um, but we still prefer to do that so that uh, even though it's pretty intuitive, that you at least have like a, a starting point. Uh, for when you start using the system. If you'd like to coordinate a trial for your library, again, go through Amanda, and she'll put that in request to us, and then we'll facilitate that. And it's pretty easy to do. It's basically, we need some IP information, and, and that's kind of it. So. Now, I don't want to you know, play favorites, but I've got to tell you, the, the group yesterday, they were pumping out questions, and they were excited. I mean, not that you guys are not excited, uh, but they, it was like we were here for, for an you know, hour and a half. So yeah, OK, that was yesterday morning, so maybe that's it. So well, one last, one, one last opportunity for questions. To, don't be afraid. A question? Okay. All right. Yes, thank you very much. We really appreciate the time. We really do hope that some of you are interested, at the very least, to take the trial of the software uh, and, and see what Sky River can do for you. If you have any questions once we leave here, send them in to Amanda. She'll get them to us, and we'll get responses. And there was this one question that we need to get a response to you, and we'll get that done as well. Thank you very much. We appreciate your time. Have a great afternoon. Thank you.